Thanks for joining us on FinPod and our latest edition of What's New at CFI, where we bring you insights from our latest courses and behind the scenes conversations with subject matter experts. Get ahead and stay ahead with the latest from CFI. Hello and welcome to the What's New at CFI podcast. I'm Asim Khan, and I'm joined today by my colleague, Sebastian Taylor. Welcome, Sebastian. Thanks for having me. Always great. So you've recently published a course entitled AI for Formulas in Excel. And I was wondering, you know, what was the motivation behind this? Were we getting requests from our users on how they might integrate artificial intelligence into their work? I think there's a couple of reasons, really. One is, as you just said, um, the demand for the course. But I suppose the, the other side of it is, well, what, why is there the demand for that? And I guess when you think about the tools and techniques that analysts can use in their day-to-day job, there's various different tools that people can use to make themselves more efficient and more productive. But by far and away, the tool that has the most potential to do that is all of these AI tools. ChatGPT being the the most obvious one and most well-known of those, Uh, but there's plenty of other tools out there that can um, either operate with a a language interface like that, or there's AI tools that can actually do tasks for you. So that brings up an excellent transition point because you went through some worked examples using both ChatGPT and Gemini, Mm -hmm. and and we had a bit of a comparison uh, between the two and and uh, what they can do and the types of results that they crank out. Could you walk us through just a couple of examples on what you had the AI do in this course? Yeah, of course. Um, one of my favorite examples is trying to break down complex formulas. So the number of times you open up someone else's uh, model in Excel and you dive into a couple of formulas and Maybe they haven't followed best practice per se or broken down formulas in a simple way. And so you're left looking at a formula that's four or five lines long um, and you really have no idea what this thing does. And sure, you could sit there for an hour and try and break it down and and work out where the inputs come from and what exactly this formula is doing. Or you could just give it to one of these AI models and ask it, what is this formula doing? Um, and it will give you a, a pretty good answer uh, right off the bat. And at least it will give you enough information to point you in the right direction and, and save you probably half of that time. Right. Now, I, I think there's, um, you're absolutely correct. There's this knee jerk, almost default response to writing a formula to a, to a problem you don't totally fully understand. And that's to use if statements, like these huge nested if statements, Mm -hmm. right? And we talk about this and our colleague Duncan uh, talks about it in some of his courses where you should think of using perhaps max and min functions rather than these long if statements. Mm -hmm. Could these AI then, could you describe a problem to the AI and have it kick out the most efficient formula that you should be using? Yeah, exactly. So th- th- that's probably the next step in that that journey of what does this if statement do? Um, the next thing you could ask is, well, is there a more efficient way I could write this formula? And so, um, yeah, you mentioned min and max there, definitely a solution depending on what you're trying to do with the if statement. Another common one is switch, which we can use uh, if you've got multiple different conditions that you want to work with. Um, and, and yeah, the AI tools are great at offering up ideas and um, potential solutions that might give you inspiration to solve a problem in a different way. Right. And uh, along those same lines, just going a little bit uh, deeper into it, you used ChatGPT, the free version, and also Gemini, and then you did some exercises using the paid version of ChatGPT. What advantages would the paid version offer? Keeping in mind, we're not marketing it, but um, it had some additional functionality, which I found useful. Yes, and I'll caveat this by saying that ChatGPT is changing so fast that uh, this changes every month. But uh, generally what the paid version of ChatGPT is giving you is a greater ability to customize um, and remember your specific tasks. So if there's a task that you do um, four or five times a week, 
instead of asking ChatGPT from a blank page each time, I want you to do this task, I want you to operate in this role and give me the answer in this format, all of that information can be remembered as part of a task in what we call a custom GPT. You can think of it like a, a pre-programmed bot for a particular task. Um, and so the, the paid version is giving you access to that functionality so that you can save yourself a, a ton of time writing uh, the same tasks over and over again. That's really helpful. And I, I think, uh, and you know this um, very well, there are other uh, GPTs on the site that other that users have created and basically contributed as intellectual property that's free once you're in the paid version is that correct you can hunt around for something that you may not need to reinvent the wheel is what i'm saying you might find somebody else's gpt would do the job for you yeah exactly uh, so you, even on the free version actually now as, as long as you click on the 4.0 model version of, of chat gpt you can interact with other people's gpts but you can't then create your own in the free version um, and as you say, that, that means that uh, you may save yourself a lot of time because someone else has already uh, created a, a GPT to do this. Yeah. And is there any uh, qualitative difference that you've noticed thus far, major qualitative difference between uh, chat GPT and Gemini? So, or should people be indifferent as to which one they use? Yeah, it's interesting. As I find it very much depends on the type of question that you're asking. Um, the questions that we've tended to ask in this particular course, AI for formulas in Excel, we try to keep it super simple. The course is really designed for people who are using ChatGPT for the first time. And so because we're asking relatively simple questions, I found both of them performed pretty well. If you start to ask more complex questions where actually ChatGPT or, or Gemini need to come up with a step-by-step -step plan to solve something. Then I find that ChatGPT is, is better at those sorts of tasks. I find Gemini is quite good at summarizing information. I know a lot of that model was built uh, or trained upon the information it has from Google search. Um, so, it is exceptionally good at summarizing information from different websites, but I find it's less good at um, giving you that kind of interactive step-by-step -step solution that ChatGPT might be good at. Okay, fair enough. And you had um, spoken of certain best practices mm -hmm. in um, querying these various AI engines. Could you tell us what those are? Yeah, of course. I think the first one I would say is be as specific as possible. And this is a big lesson that you learn as you start to work with these AI tools is they will, I mean, it's a computer at the end of the day and it's trying its best to give you what you asked for. And therefore, if you ask bad questions, you will get bad answers. And so you realize the value of asking for exactly what you want and saying exactly what you mean. So be specific. I think being concise also helps because if you're not concise, you end up with so much information in your initial paragraph that it doesn't know where to focus its attention. It doesn't know what are the most important parts of what you're saying. So be concise and stick to the important parts. Uh, and finally, I would say, try and break down your tasks into individual steps. So. And and it's it's often hard to realize maybe that your task has three steps instead of one. But if you can really think about, okay, what's the process in this calculation? And how can I better break that down? Ask it one thing at a time. I think it will generally give you better answers. That's super helpful. So you just, you can't like write in a whole essay on something. And um, so it's better to be specific and concise. These are the two big things. And do you have to, um, does it help to identify yourself in terms of what kind of user you are? Like, you know, you could say I'm a novice at this and I'm or a advanced at this. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely a tip you hear a lot. And I think in certain situations that can help. I think particularly where the context is not obvious. For example, in this course, we're working in Excel and we want to write formulas and ultimately formulas that, that are correct and that work. 
And so saying that you are an analyst working in Excel doesn't necessarily add anything to its intent to provide you a formula that works. Um, whereas if maybe you're talking about a task like uh, creating a, a content strategy for your new business, there's all sorts of directions you could go with that. And so actually saying uh, act as an experienced marketer in that case would help it focus on giving you an answer that an experienced person would give you. Um, yeah. Okay. No, great. So in, in closing, are there any pieces of uh, advice you can give or encouragement, I should say, how, how, how you know, because I, I think we all need to try our hand at artificial intelligence. It's certainly not going away. So um, what can you tell our learners about getting started? I would say just, just get stuck in, uh, just start using some of these tools. Uh, there will be tasks that you find that they're exceptionally good at, and there will be tasks that you find that they're useless at. And you'll have some moments of frustration where they really won't give you the answer that you want, even though it seems so simple to you. Um, but the more you practice like that, the more you'll get a feel for what they're good at and what they're not. Um, and you'll you'll start to understand where you can use them to save yourself time. And I suppose by the same token, the, you'll become better at prompting. The, yeah, absolutely. The AI. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. So I encourage everyone to check out this course, AI for Formulas in Excel. Sebastian, thank you so much for your time, and we look forward to seeing you again. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the conversation. FinPod is brought to you by Corporate Finance Institute, the number one rated online provider of finance and banking training, certifications, and productivity tools.